Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. Uh, this is a video that I've been promising to do for a while now, so I hope you find it helpful. Um, we've talked a lot about why you should refuse police searches, and you should check out my video, Five Reasons You Should Never Agree to a Police Search, if you need to hear more about that. But here's the thing that keeps coming up. A, a lot of folks have pointed out that refusing a police search doesn't just make the cops disappear in a poof of smoke. And that's true, it doesn't. I mean, you know, lots of difficult things can happen after you refuse a police search. So let's, let's talk about, uh, about what those things are. And, and one of the main points I want to get across here is that just because you're afraid of what might happen after you refuse a search, after you assert your rights, it's still your best move. And so that's important to understand. And I want to make it clear to everybody that I'm not clueless about all of the ways that this stuff can go wrong, because we get that response a lot. Like, are you out of your mind? If you assert your rights, the police are just going to do this or they're going to do that. We're very familiar with some of the things that they can do. And so let's talk about them and how your constitutional rights apply, even in some of those worst case kind of scenarios. So let's get into it here. Uh, say the cops pull you over for something kind of trivial, like an unsafe lane change, you know, like sort of one of those catch-all kind of things, that the excuses that they use. But, but they're basically just profiling you. And soon enough, they're asking to search your car and you say, no, officer, I'm sorry, I'm not consenting to any searches. Uh, so now, one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to search you or they aren't. First of all, obviously, if they don't search you, then hooray for you, you win. You get to drive home safely. And, you know, this is actually a very real uh, possibility. Officers really will back down in many cases because they simply don't have probable cause. And, you know, not every cop is, is a corrupt scumbag who's going to make stuff up or give you a really hard time. So understand that this does happen. I mean, I get emails all the time from people who refuse to search and then didn't get searched. The combination of properly asserting your constitutional rights and coming across as a calm, potentially innocent person and the police officer actually lacking probable cause, not really having a valid reason that they can cite to search your vehicle. All of those three things can come together and you really might not get searched. But as many of you have pointed out, things often just aren't nearly that easy. In many cases, when you refuse a police search, the officer will threaten you with all sorts of things. And this is where it gets really tough for you to hold your ground. Keep in mind that police can lie. So they might say they can impound your car, which is bull. Uh, they'll make all sorts of threats. But remember one thing. They're trying to get you to say that it's okay to search. See, if... If your consent didn't matter, they wouldn't be trying so hard to get it. So now you're basically playing a, a high-stakes game with the officer. You know, their job is to make you say it's okay to search the car, and your job is not to say that that's okay, no matter how hard they, they pressure you. So it's, it's a battle of wits, basically. And, and once you get into this situation, the next thing you need to do is ask if you're free to go. This is important because the officer not only needs to have a legal reason to search you, but they also need a legal reason to even hold you by the side of the road. And unless you say that you want to leave, then the law considers the, off the, the encounter voluntary. So keep this in mind. For example, if you refuse a search and then the officer threatens to call in the drug-sniffing dogs, which is something that they'll, they'll do in many situations, the officer can legally call a dog anytime he wants but the officer can't legally detain you without evidence. So if, you know, asking if you're free to go can provide legal protection against that dog sniff. So now let's talk about the, the worst case scenario. You've refused to search and you've asked if you're free to go. And you've done both of these things very politely, which is important. But they don't let you go and they do search you and you get arrested for something stupid like, say, fireworks. You still did the right things. You asserted your constitutional rights, and the circumstances of your arrest do matter in a court of law. I mean, honestly, it's actually even really common for charges to get dropped before you even go to court. You know, if the magistrate looks at the case and realizes that it's not likely to hold up, you know, that's that's a jurisdictional thing that varies from, from place to place. But I do hear about areas where sometimes the police are a little bit overzealous and make a lot of petty, you know, marijuana arrests or things like that. And those cases don't always even even result in, in actual criminal charges. But if you are charged, uh, as will often be the case, then your lawyer has some really solid legal grounds on which to challenge the evidence against you. And this is really typical stuff. I mean, when, you know, in any criminal case, one of the first things that happens is, is your lawyer would, would make a motion to suppress and challenge any, any evidence that, um, 
that he or she feels was was illegally obtained against you. And so evidence resulting from a search that, that uh, you didn't consent to, uh, evidence that uh, was turned up during a prolonged detention when you'd asked if, if you were free to leave and they didn't actually uh, turn out to have legal grounds to detain you, all of those things are eligible for suppression. And if you talk to any good criminal defense attorney, these kinds of hearings are, are things that they can win. They win this stuff. Um, not every time, but, uh, but there's a system here. And so that's really why it's so important to understand how to assert these, these particular rights, even if you're convinced that the officer doesn't care about your rights, even if you're convinced that the officer is going to search you anyway. The point is that you have to create legal grounds on which to challenge the officer's conduct later on. And you know, this can also apply to, to civil rights lawsuits, to other types of situations if you're filing a complaint, all of these things. If you agree to be detained, if you agree to be searched, you can't challenge the officer's actions. And obviously a police encounter can go wrong in any number of ways. And police do routinely violate people's rights in, in horrible ways and in all sorts of situations. So, you know, I can't promise you a good outcome. I can't promise you some of the better outcomes that I've enumerated uh, today but I can tell you how to increase your odds of getting those best outcomes. And so that's really what this is about. So, you know, please understand that the fear that your rights might be violated is all the more reason to know and assert those rights in any and every police encounter. So uh, please keep that in mind and please be safe out there. As always, all of our, our videos, including our very cool instructional videos, are, are available on YouTube as well. So check those out and please uh, visit our website for more information. We have an excellent FAQ and you can also order DVD copies of our videos if you're interested in making a donation. And We do really appreciate your support there. So thanks so much and be safe everyone.